What's up guys, my name is Syrian. This week marks the beginning of IGN first covering No Man's Sky yet again. The coverage started off with 21 minutes of footage from Bellari 5, the planet we have already seen but gave us some more details for various aspects of the game. Most of what was said was already known, however this is the first time we have seen it. There won't be many clips shown in this video, only stills, so if you haven't seen it already, you can click now to watch the original video on IGN's channel. A spoiler warning may be in order, as this video does go into some details that have not been shown or talked about before. These revolve around gameplay mechanics that some may want to discover on their own, so watch with some caution if this is how you feel. Instead of going over everything in detail, let's look at some of the smaller details and things we might have missed. First off, I'll talk about the new feature we saw, the binoculars. This is the first time we have seen them. They are used for looking out into the distance, seeing how far away things are, and setting waypoints, which Sean does on a distant structure. The binoculars were also shown as the way to scan creatures. Before, simply scanning the nearby area would pick up the creatures, but now it will only show nearby resources and points of interest. Zooming in on a creature will give you the option to scan them, which will later allow you to rename them. As far as resources go, there will be a few ways to gather them. Of course, as seen before you will be able to gather them from crystals and rock structures depending on your scanner and multi-tool level. You will also be able to gather resources from asteroids if you shoot them. There will be other ways to gather resources too. First will be trading, which wasn't shown in new gameplay. Next will be through destroying freighter cargo pods and sentinels. Another way will be through rewarding you for certain actions, as in when Sean shuts down the alarm in a factory, more on this in a minute. The last way will be finding cargo drops and gathering what's inside of them. These will be found around the environment and on landing pads. For the first time, we got a look at the interactions we could have with an alien monolith, or as named in the video, relics. Before, we knew we would learn words for a certain alien language from approaching it, but now we got the chance to see the interactive menu in action. They cut back to the studio as it was shown, but I enlarged it to the best of my ability. A Twitter follower by the name of Tom Hawkins also sent a clearer image. The one shown right now. Thank you so much for that. Three options were shown. It's a little vague as to what they mean or what the outcomes could be. Sean chooses the first option which allows him to sleep under the relic, regaining his health as he does. An interesting thing to point out is as he chooses to sleep, a message appears saying your discoveries are blessed by the Corvaxian echoes. This may be a sort of protection against anything harming you as you sleep, but this is unknown as of now. Next, we see the message, as you sleep, you are restored by a strange power, and your standings with the Corvax increase. Seems as though these interactions along with the interactions with the races themselves will affect your involvement with the races in the game. Although we have seen the user interface before, we got to see what it looked like after the content was updated. It was very brief and didn't go through as much detail as before, but let's take a quick look at what was added. Stats were moved from the bottom of the items to the right side, and the addition of an options menu was added. Also, upgrades seem to be grouped together depending on what stat you want to craft something for. Two items crafted were the land disruptor for the multi-tool and the bypass chip for calling your ship to a landing pod. Both were finite resources, so you'll craft a certain amount and once they are used up, you'll have to craft more. I'll go more into detail on the new user interface in another video later, but these were some of the main points shown. After crafting the land disruptor, Sean proceeded to blast a hole into a hillside to reveal a cave. We've heard about this before and have seen glimpses of caves and it's nice to see one revealed. He mentioned that they could stretch on for longer distances, but the one shown wasn't as large as they could be. Inside the cave, the temperature warmed up dramatically. Caves shield players from environmental damage, so it gives you a little time to breathe if things are getting hectic. Before this footage, we had only really seen the exterior of structures in the distance. Now we got the chance to see them up close and see their interiors. Buildings will have certain functions and everything will be procedurally generated, including the interior. We got our first look at both the small base and factory. The base features various furnishings and a terminal allowing you to save your location. This is also the first time we've really seen how to save the game. A landing pad was attached to the base. On the landing pad there were various cargo drops and a terminal. You can use the bypass ship mentioned before to call your ship to that location. The landing pad can also be used by other travelers, so you'll see other ships landing there periodically. Inside the base was a Corvax scientist. This is the same one that was shown in the recent leaked photos too. We got a look at the dialogue and it gave us just as much information as the monolith did, 
And by that, I mean not too much. We won't know much due to little knowledge of the language, but the outcome of each choice is unclear. I'm sure the outcome will all depend on your relationship with the race and your knowledge of the language. Moving on to the factory, we were told that they will produce goods. Approaching it shows that there is a reinforced door, and to get in you'll have to hack into it or blow the door open. Simply attacking the door earned Sean two stars towards his one level and set off an alarm. Once he entered, he was greeted by another terminal and given more options. Again, as with the monolith and Corvax scientists, the options were vague, but Sean knew which option to choose to turn the alarm off. This gave him a reward of 100 heridium. Now for something that most likely flew past everyone that watched the new footage. I want to send a huge shout out to Elka for pointing this out to me and a few others, but right as Sean exits the cave mentioned earlier, for a brief moment you can see a strange structure behind a rock and tree. It seems as though Sean may have seen this as he quickly turned away after it appears. I'm not sure as to what it could be, but I cannot wait to find one and discover what's inside. After destroying the door to enter the factory, Sean was attacked by a few sentinels. During the sentinel attack, something that was added was a message showing when a star was gained in the wanted system. The sentinel attack didn't show anything new, except for our first look at the quadrupedal sentinel's scale. I have to admit, this shocked me as I expected them to be much larger than they were. Instead, they seemed to be small, faster sentinels. Destroying the sentinels awarded him various resources, but he then let the sentinels kill him. This caused him to respawn at the terminal shown before and also lose some of his units. He could have waited for his wanted level to decrease, but I'm sure this was done for the purpose of showing what happens when you die for the demo. During the attack, we could see that the multi-tool had various modes that we could switch between. Apart from crafting and using land disruptors and various other grenades, we can have a laser weapon and a projectile weapon, which will use ammo. Ammo will have to be reloaded and crafted, so it will have to be used sparingly. Laser weapons will have a cooldown, so long periods of use will require a brief rest. After calling his ship and flying into space, Sean shows off how attacking a freighter will work, but it also causes the Sentinel Interceptors to attack him. They seem very quick and powerful as they quickly destroy Sean's ship even though his ship really doesn't have great armor. Watching the new gameplay reveals a few more details about the cockpit of ships. Apart from simple things like speed and the compass, we saw planet information on one screen and enemy ship information as seen when Sean begins attacking the Interceptor. Another thing that was very interesting was that while looking at planets, you get some information on them. This included their name and the estimated time of arrival. This could shorten drastically as you engage your hyperdrive and you can even upgrade it to where a 30 minute trip could take only a few seconds. After being destroyed by the interceptors, Sean respawns at the nearest space station and this is where the scale of things really sets in. The runway of the space station is huge and can truly be appreciated as another ship can be seen flying in. A look through a window shows how large the size of the original area shown was, as Sean mentions that the small dot in the center of the heads up display is about the size of that area. I know a few people don't like hearing this phrase, but this shows that there really are planet sized planets. We also got a chance to see the interior of the space station, although it was only one room. It looked similar to the base room's design, with similar plants and flags, but we didn't see much else outside of this. I'd assume that these features would be something we'd see in Corvaxian structures, and with any other race we'd see something different. This will help us recognize which race occupies certain planets or systems without having to physically see an alien. This would also help give the races their own personality. I can't wait to see the other races and what their structures will look like. After all of this, I expected to just jump into the galactic map and see what we have always seen. However, this also came under changes and the new design blew me away. There were many different colored stars, and there is also a new design that gave more information on the systems you want to warp to. Information includes region, planets in orbit, spectral color, warp information, and atlas connection status. Maybe the malevolent force is stronger in some systems and pose more challenges with discoveries. This may be something we have to wait longer to see. Next to the name, you can see CB, which corresponds with an element we have seen before. This could indicate that an element is more prevalent in that system as opposed to others. There is also a new feature that shows you a path towards the center of the galaxy. It has been described as a GPS to the center. One last tidbit of information was also pointed out by Elka. If you listen closely around the 17 minute and 20 second mark, you can hear alien chatter behind Sean's voice. This isn't much, but it is very cool. 
the new footage put an emphasis on what you'll be doing in No Man's Sky, as that was a common criticism. This also showed off many of the new features and we got to see a lot of new things. Different ways to earn resources, various choices, and just an overall new look. It's great to see No Man's Sky being featured in IGN first again and I cannot wait to see what's in store for us for the rest of the month. It started off great and I hope to see it continue. What did you enjoy about the new footage? What do you want to see throughout the month? Leave us a comment and let us know. Thank you so much for watching and we will be back with more videos soon. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and check out our other videos. We also hope you get a chance to check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon pages. We will be back with more videos soon and thank you for watching.